Oh yeah, you bad pack. Today we are going to be looking at the case of Harrison Marty Graham, otherwise known as the body collector or the cookie monster killer. If you like what you see here, please subscribe, leave a like to let me know and leave a comment down below. I'd be interested to hear what you think of the case. After Marty's eviction, the landlord forced entry. They saw remains and called the police. A search of the property began. A female was found deceased on a mattress who had been dead for some time. A second body was found in a pile of trash. Around quarter to four, a homicide detective joined the search team and the third set of remains was found wrapped in sheets and buried under debris beneath the second body. A fifth body was found between two mattresses and a sixth body was found crammed inside a six-inch deep closet wrapped in a sheet and tied with electrical cord. The final grisly discovery was made outside the window of the apartment on the roof. When leaving the apartment, Harrison had taken a water bottle, some clothing and his cookie monster puppet. Born on October the 5th, 1958, the eldest of five children, he was nearing 29 at the time of the murders. When he was 12, he was diagnosed with a mental disorder and was in and out of foster homes. He was now six feet tall and medium brown complexion and average build, but large brawny shoulders and big hands. He was a high school dropout that used and abused drugs. To the neighbouring people who didn't know him very well, he seemed to be a nice, quiet, helpful handyman. Harrison would even go on to the neighbouring basketball courts and play with the children there and entertain them with his cookie monster he carried with him. After interviewing neighbours that knew more about Marty than the others, police discovered that he had a composition book filled with drawings of naked women and dismembered body parts. Also, there had been charges against Marty due to his aggression. He was known to act a little crazy by locals and talk to his puppet all the time. An ex of Harrison's would later testify that he would have long conversations for hours with his puppet. So on August 25th, the Daily News published an anonymous account by a former lover of Harrison, Graham, who said that in January 1986, he told her that he'd offed a previous girlfriend and tossed her out the window. She'd waited one day till he went out and went to the back window. On the roof below, there was an old weathered mattress. She went out, lifted it and found a skeleton. She hadn't believed his stories about murder until then. She did eventually leave him and went to live with her mother, but she informed the police at the time, but they didn't discover anybody because they didn't believe her. When she learned about the bodies found in the apartment, she'd counted herself lucky. She said that she got nightmares and she couldn't sleep. And she said it was like his hands were around her throat um, and her life was going out of her. Eventually, she did lose her anonymity because she testified in court. When they discussed the leg bones, because there were set bones that were separate, Harrison Graham began to giggle. When a reporter from the Enquirer asked him why, he said he left out the ankle bone. This was maybe to uh, make himself out to be crazy, um, but it was he did also bring four furry monkey puppets into court and he set them in a row to play with uh, while the attorneys argued his case. Um, he wanted to take the stand in his defence. Um, and he said, according to his attorney, he'd said, put me on, I'll clear this up. Um, each day, he entered the courtroom with a bouncy gait. When Harrison Graham's mental health came to be evaluated, Dr. Robert Stanton, a psychiatrist, evaluated him, citing an IQ of 63, which is considered to be less than mentally competent. This, coupled with his substance abuse and addictions, resulted in a man who, according to the laws of the state of Philadelphia, was incapable. Harrison was suffering 
from chemically induced auditory hallucinations, psychosis, blackouts and chronic paranoia. Moreover, a psychologist by the name of Albert Levitt testified that aside from the defendant's chemical and physiological issues, Harrison was incompetent in fundamental academic skill, reading, writing, math and telling time. Harrison didn't exhibit any of the usual serial killer traits regarding abuse of animals or a history of shallow or charming behaviour. He does, to this day, still have disassociative identity disorder, which used to be called multiple personality disorder. Not to be confused with schizophrenia, Harrison Frank Graham, um, he was presented as having three distinct personalities. Frank was a foul-mouthed drug addict and murderer. Junior was an unmanageable two-year-old who adored the cookie monster. And Marty was the likeable handyman who had complied with the police. So despite Harrison's many problems, the judge found him fit to stand trial and he was sentenced to six life sentences and six death sentences. Six, unusually though, the judge decided that Harrison would serve a life sentence before he served any death sentence. So that meant that in effect what Harrison was doing was serving life without parole. So despite the evidence, Harrison Graham's mother still claimed that he was innocent. She said he's taken a fall and that he'd been set up and that the real killer was still out there. One of Harrison's foster parents said, Marty is a child in a man's body. Marty is retarded. He was never raised to hate. He was raised to be obedient. Marty is alive. I want him to stay alive. I must make clear at this point that disassociated identity disorder in Marty Harrison Graham is coincidental. That disorder does not a serial killer make. I um, just want to make that very clear. It's just an interesting aspect of this case. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Share your thoughts on the case. I will be going live tomorrow, which is Sunday now, to have a discussion about not only that, but recent letters and books in the offing. Um, until then, take care of yourself. To thine own self be true. And remember, life is too short to be taken seriously all the time. Bye-bye. But I have to be me And everyone can see Your anger is misplaced And I'm gonna tell